Have you ever thought about leveraging your Clifton strengths to become an extraordinary teacher and educator? If you've ever thought about that, in today's episode, we're gonna give you five breakthrough tips that will help you leverage your strengths to become an extraordinary teacher for your scholars. So grab a pen, piece of paper, get ready to take some notes, because we're starting right now. Hey everybody, Gordon Amerson here, Superintendent of Schools and Gallup Certified Strengths Coach. And on this channel, we leverage my experience from classroom teacher to school district superintendent to help you go further, faster in your educational leadership and your educational journey. If this is your first time with us, don't forget to hit that subscribe button as well as the bell notification so you don't miss any of our latest updates or any of our newest content. So today we're gonna to talk about Clifton Strengths and we're gonna talk specifically about how do we leverage our strengths to be an extraordinary teacher, an extraordinary educator, to create wonderful spaces and opportunities and outcomes for the kids that we serve and the communities that we serve. So we're gonna explore five specific tips that will help you become an extraordinary instructor, but more important, it will help you just be an extraordinary human being because you'll be operating using your strengths, using your natural talents and gifts. And when we are operating at that level, we are more efficient, we're more productive, and quite frankly, we can be much more successful. So let's jump right in with tip number one. So Clifton Strengths Teaching Insight number one, personalize teaching approaches. This is the opportunity for us to really embrace differentiation, really embrace what are the individual needs, what are the individual wants, desires, of our students and being able to meet them where they are. We always want to find ways to personalize our teaching, our teaching approaches so we can show our students wonderful opportunities where we can unlock things for them that they're not aware of. We do that by personalizing. We do that by leveraging specific strengths. So for example, if you are highly talented in communication, you will have a unique ability to tell stories to connect the dots, to have narratives that take your students on a journey where they're really, really highly engaged and they're attentive and they wanna know more and they wanna learn more. And conversely, if we personalize our teaching strategies, leveraging our strengths around being analytical, you will delve deeply into the data. You will explain, you'll give the content, you'll give the context, you'll give the details and the particulars. But when we start with the idea that personalized teaching experiences and personalizing all of our spaces, using who we are and what our talents and abilities are, we create this, we create this rich environment. Where our students can thrive. Our students can see themselves in our classrooms. Our students can see themselves in the content and the experiences that we're teaching to them. So think about ways as you're learning and growing and nurturing your own strengths, which of my strengths will help me create a personalized teaching environment, a personalized learning environment where my students can thrive and where I can thrive by leveraging what I'm naturally gifted and talented in and then creating that unique learning experience for all of our students. So personalized teaching experience, personalized teaching approaches is Clifton Strengths Teaching Insight number one. All right, Clifton Strengths Teaching Insight number two, student engagement. Student engagement. This is critically important to having a space and a place where our students can feel that they're learning, they're growing, they're being stretched, they're being challenged uh, to learn and to grow and to explore more and more. So when I think about how do we leverage our Cliff and Strengths as educators in thinking through the lens of student engagement, I think about, as an example, people who are highly talented in Wu, winning others over. If I want to engage my students, I want to find ways to connect with them. I want to find ways to influence them. I want to find out what are they like? What is relatable to them? What are they experiencing? What do they get excited about? And so if I'm thinking through my natural talent of winning others over or woo, then I'm delving deeply into learning and growing and understanding what my students want and need. And then I'm finding ways to create that as a means of inviting them into the conversation, inviting them into the discussion, inviting them to create their own learning experiences, that student engagement at its highest level. And we're creating the space and the opportunity when we leverage a strength like Woo. Conversely, 
What about a strength like empathy? Empathy is a great way to have student engagement as well because when we demonstrate empathy, a care, a nurturing tone or temperament to support our students, to want to know more about them, to want to connect with their lived experiences, what they may be going through, the challenges that they may have, opening ourselves up through the, the strength and the talent of empathy creates this fertile ground for us to connect with our students, engaging them, connect, connecting with them, and asking them to explore the learning process with us. But when we, again, leverage our strengths, whatever those strengths are, I'm giving you some examples uh, of just ways you could think about it, but whatever our natural talents and gifts are, it's without question that student engagement is gonna be critically important. It's a best practice of having strong ways of student engagement, but then discovering and leveraging what your strengths are can be a force multiplier in being able to help students be that much more engaged and produce the outcomes that you're looking for with your scholars. So student engagement is Clifton Strengths Teaching Insight number two. Clifton Strengths Teaching Insight number three, team collaboration. So we're moving out of the classroom now and we're moving into the department meeting, we're moving into the grade level collaboration meeting and we're talking about team collaboration. As educators, as professional educators, we learn and grow together. And so when we can create opportunities for dialogue, discussion, mutual shared learning experiences with our colleagues, uh, we're better, we're better for that. Uh, we're then equipped with more tools and more resources and more opportunities to find those connective points with our scholars, with our students in our classrooms. So when I think about, okay, again, how do I leverage my strengths in an effort to build a more team collaborative, uh, you know, a team, more team collaboration based environment? And I think it's really important to think about one example is harmony. So a Clifton Strengths, the talent of harmony. When ideas are coming together, when professionals are talking, when professionals are growing and learning, we have, we have deep convictions and perspectives about how to teach something, how students may learn, what would be the research or the backup or the evidence. And we have to find ways to be able to share those insights, share those thoughts, but create the space for everybody to be able to contribute. So somebody who's, who's talented in harmony will be looking for opportunities to connect the dots between people who may have differing opinions, who may have different uh, positions. But when you are highly talented in harmony, you'll be looking for ways to build bridges. You'll be looking for ways to help people feel valued, help people feel connected for the express purpose of still getting the outcomes and the results that we expect and that we want and that we need. But when we leverage that harmony talent, we create a space where we can bridge the gap for folks. And that's a really, really important piece of creating a collaborative, cohesive, healthy, vibrant culture uh, in within a grade level, within a department, within a school community, within a school organization. So those people highly talented in harmony can help create that team collaboration environment. Conversely, also, if you're, if you're highly talented or skilled in strategic, as an example, strategic people figure out ways to keep the big picture in mind. So while some folks may struggle and they may get bogged down in the details and the minutia, if you are an educator who's highly talented and strategic, you find a way to get back into the macro, the big picture perspective to keep focused on the main goal, the main objectives, and staying on task to move the work forward. Strategic thinkers do that really, really well. So when you leverage your talents, when you're leveraging your skills, thinking through, again, an example of harmony or an example of strategic, where we can create this environment of team collaboration, where we get more results, we get more traction, we get more alignment. Those are all the things that we want our educators to have so they can go into their classrooms and do great things for our students. So again, leveraging your strengths creates an environment of team collaboration. And that's Clifton Strengths Teaching Insight number three. All right, so as we move into Clifton Strengths Teaching Insight number four, 
Uh, share with me in the comments below, out of the first three insights that you heard, personal teaching approaches, student engagement, and team collaboration, which of those resonates with you most? And how are you gonna leverage your strengths and talents to move those best practices forward? Share that with us in the comments below. And let's move into teaching insight, Clifton Strengths teaching insight number four. Clifton Strengths teaching insight number four, professional development. Professional development is different than team collaboration because team collaboration is happening on your campus, uh, within your department, within your grade level. Professional development can happen in those contexts, but also professional development can happen for you individually, on your own, with a completely different grade level, with a completely different team, with a completely different school site. You may be at a conference. There's a number of different places where professional learning can and will happen. What I will tell you is professional development is critically important to our uh, growth of our skills, our knowledge, and our capacity. And so when I think about, again, leveraging my talents or my strengths, I think about, from the perspective of professional development, a talent like learner. Now this one is near and dear for me because learner for me is my number one. And so learner is always wanting more information, or always wanting to grow and learn and get, have new ahas, new experiences, wanting to find what's the newest book, what's the newest piece of research, what's the newest best practice, what's the newest piece of equipment. All those things that could aid in my professional growth and development is exactly what we should be thirsting for as we leverage the talent of learner because our professional development is our growth. It's our opportunity to learn more, expand our professional practice. So thinking through what your natural talents are, and thinking through the lens of professional development, learner is one example. And what are other examples of strengths that we could use and leverage to get more out of our professional development, our opportunity to grow and stretch our abilities and capacity? You know, I think about when I go away uh, to a conference, I'm always wanting to find what are the takeaways, what are the ahas, and what are the resources that I can gather and bring back that will best support my organization, my team, and so on and so forth. So thinking through professional development, I want the same for you. How do you, again, look at and assess your talents and your skills, and then how do you leverage those to grow your skills, your knowledge, and capacity in the area of professional development? Focus on that because it's gonna to continue to grow, and it feeds the other insights that we've shared. The more we're learning and growing, the more we can do around team collaboration, the more we can do around student engagement, and the more that we can do about personalizing our teaching approach and our learning environments for our students. All right, and with that, we're gonna to move to Clifton Strengths Teaching Insight number five, building relationships. Uh, if you watch a number of my videos, you'll hear me talk about building relationships, whether it's the classroom teacher, whether it's school site principal, whether it's, it doesn't matter. Our core focus and function should be in education is building relationships. It's building relationships with students, with staff, with parents, with the community. Building relationships are critically important. And I think from a perspective of growing and developing into a rock star professional and a rock star educator, building relationships will be at the core. And then learning to leverage those strengths, again, is at the core of, of growing our skills, our knowledge, and our capacity to be effective as professionals. So when I think about specific talents, I'm thinking about developer as an example. To build relationships, to mentor, to coach, to support. Leveraging that developer talent is all about creating the space to mentor and nurture and support and coach people. Big people and little people, right? Adults, students, scholars, children. Uh, if we are skilled and talented in developer, we look for ways to coach and mentor and nurture. And through that process, we develop trust. We develop connection. Uh, we develop compassion and empathy that allows for us to build a strong connection and trusting relationship. Because as we're building relationships, one of the, one of the most critically important principles of building a good, strong relationship is developing trust. When we're highly talented and skilled in developer, we have a natural inclination to be able to mentor, coach, 
nurture and support other people. Another way that we can build relationships is uh, to leverage the talent, uh, another example as uh, it, of Includer. So Includers are very, very good at reading a room, reading the environment, and then figuring out whose voice has not been included yet. And the Includer is highly talented and skilled at bringing those in, getting those other voices, bringing them into the conversation, making sure that they know, making sure that that child or that staff member or that parent, making sure that they know that they're valued, that they are going to be heard, and that they have a they have a important contribution to make in the context of that meeting, in that lesson, in that program. Includers are really good at that. And so educators, teachers who leverage skills and strategies and talents around includer or developer are effective at building, have the, have the building blocks to build effective relationships. And so these examples of how do we leverage and use our strengths to create environments for students to thrive, these five tips are really, really there to help you build on your professional practice. Become the best educator, become the best teacher, become the best in, inspirer of children, inspirer of the next generation of folks. And I believe deeply that Clifton Strengths is a force multiplier that will help create those environments, create the on-ramps for students to do great things, create on-ramps for our staff, our teachers, our principals, our uh, technical staff, our clerical staff, our executive leaders. We should all be leveraging our talents and our natural gifts, which are our strengths. If you want more information, if you've never done your Clifton Strengths assessment, uh, check the uh, description below. There'll be information and links where you can get more information about doing your assessment. Unlock your potential. Find out what your strengths are. And if you know what your strengths are, then explore those more deeply, more meaningfully, so that way you can operate at your highest level. And if you want to get more information about Clifton Strengths and leveraging those talents and skills, check out this video and it's going to tell you all about the assessment and how you can unlock your potential to do great things by leveraging your Clifton strengths. We'll see you in the next one. Be well, everyone. Take care.